Welcome to Keto on the Couch with Rachel and Joe. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy ketos. ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 200 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Yeah, now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we also have a website which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah. So, uh, how was your week this week? It was good, except for my car got broken into. Yeah. We found out somebody, like, broke into our car and, like, I don't know how many other cars. It was like a hundred. Like a hundred cars in the community just going down, going through every car. But they did catch the guy, like, the next day. They did. And, and honestly, there's, I mean, I'm a part-time children's pastor. There's nothing to steal, <laughs> right? So, um, but... What it was, what was what was bad about it was Caleb has been on me forever about locking my car. Like every single night, he's like, did you lock your car? You know, you should be a good steward of your vehicle and lock your car door. And I'm like, yeah, 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 I've got it. Don't worry about it, son. And sure enough, when my car like got broken into. You didn't have the doors locked. I didn't have the doors locked. And Caleb just looked at me with that mom look that was like, Mm-hmm. And I was like, man. Yeah, there was nothing. For, I mean, they didn't take anything. There's all, nothing worse than having to get an I told you so from, from your, your child. Kid. Yeah. So um, all I had in my glove box were like like CDs from Joyce Meyer and like Joseph Prince. So <laughs> what was there to take? Nothing really to take. Yeah, but still, I got the knowing look and that was plenty enough. Sometimes I would forget my computer in the car and I've gotten in the habit of like not like leaving yeah. that in the car, but Ruh -ruh. Yeah. unfortunately my truck was locked, so they didn't break into my truck. Dang it. And you avoided the look. Yeah, I avoided the look. Man. So this week's kind of been like, I don't know, wonky. Like it's been like raining every single day. And hard. And hard. Like not all day. Like you, you wake up in the morning at rain and I look at Rachel and I'm like, great. How am I going to get my work done today? Like, oh my gosh, we've got so much work to do. And the rain is making everything grow super fast. Right. But then we get out there and it stops raining long enough to get the work done, but it's miserable because everything is wet. But isn't God good? At least you're able to get yeah, we, it done. Yeah, we have been able to get all the work done. But then after it's done raining, it gets ridiculously hot and humid. But then it rains all afternoon. And it's kind of been putting me in like a little bit of a depressed state. Oh, like, I'm I don't sorry. deal with rain well. I get like, I don't know. I need the sunshine. I've definitely had some like headaches from like, I don't know, like a sinus pressure. Yeah. You know, and I never get headaches, which is like really weird. But can I say that I have a new appreciation for you this week, sir? <laughs> This week, I decided that I needed to kind of track on my own, cook my own meals, sort of in preparation for football season. Yeah, because football season started this week. Yeah, and you're gone a lot. Well, that means that pretty much every Thursday I'll be I'll be gone because I'll usually have a JV or a middle school game on Wednesday or Thursday, and then pretty much every Friday night from like from now. Well, actually, I think the high school season starts in two weeks. But from that point until the second week of November, I'm not home at all on Fridays. I leave at 5 o'clock, and I don't usually get home till 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. And I thought, you know, how hard could this be? I need to do it myself. I'm kind of like um, Aaron and Sarah from, like, Sundays with Sarah. She's always talking about how, like, Aaron cooks all of her meals and kind of is in charge of, you know, the whole, like, making sure you stay on track with your food. Well, we had a similar approach when I came to you and said, like, give keto another shot. You're like, yeah, on one condition, you have to cook all my, I don't want to have to worry about macros. I don't want to have to worry about food. Like, you were like, I will only eat what you put in front of me, but that's your job. You want me on keto? You do all the work. And they had a big milestone in their life. She just did 52 weeks. Yep. She, like, hit her year mark. And so when I was watching theirs, I was thinking, man, yeah, I need to do this on my own and just see like how hard could it be it's hard 
It's hard to track. Especially if you're tracking. It's hard to plan. Yep. It's hard to think about it. Is And especially if you're not on a challenge where you're on a very regimented thing and you're trying to work in vegetables and you're trying to work in the fats. And, and, and you did time. it very simple this week. You pretty much were doing like eggs and round beef because you're like, this is, at least this is easy to figure out. But when yeah. you start adding in the broccoli. vegetables and all that stuff, yeah, you had broccoli a couple I days had, and you uh, had, uh, you had uh, Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. And then I try to do some like miracle rice because of course I wanted to like add some girth to my meal without adding a bunch of carbs. And uh, yeah, so I really appreciate you. I just want to publicly say thank, well, thank you, you for all of the hard work. I'm you glad did. that you were able to do it, especially because like not only like we said, I'm going to be gone on like Thursdays and Fridays. It's not as bad as lacrosse season where I'm gone every single day. Yeah. But then Saturdays, I'm usually gone all day because I have we run like, you know, from eight in the morning to three in the afternoon or three in the afternoon till 10 at night. And then on the morning shifts, we're always going to have church afterwards. Right. So I'll never be home on Saturdays for the next 12 weeks. But I'm going to say I'm glad that, like, this is over with you doing your own meal prep and your own tracking. Not because I don't think you can do it, but I miss it. For mm. me, I it's one of the few things I feel like I can do for you. I enjoy cooking for you. But, I enjoy, I don't know. It's like, I know it's like a little bit of a role reversal. Yeah. But more and more, like, men are doing a lot of cooking and stuff. And yeah. I, it's just something I enjoy. I enjoy being able to give you good food and, and like different types of foods, but keeping it simple, but keeping you on track. But I did think we, we came to kind of a good, like, partnership in, in talking about how we're going to talk a little bit more about it. Because sometimes, like, the things, you know, the recipes that you enjoy may be a little different than mine. Right. And if we have to, you know, change some stuff up in order for me to feel like, I don't know, I have some say in what we're eating. Because, you know, I'm all about, like, quantity and he's really more about like quality and like enjoying good recipes. So for me, like I love, like for instance, the lasagna that we make. Right. Like I love that, except for the piece because it's so action packed is like really small. So. But I, it's the same amount of food, same amount of calories. It's just all piled in one piece. We need to trick my mind a little so bit. So what Rachel does is she takes it all apart and eats it piece by piece, layer by layer. Yeah. So I feel like which is actually food. really good. Somebody had actually mentioned in the comment section from last week that they have the same kind of thing. Like they have a huge appetite. They can out eat most men. It's a hormone issue, and it comes down to dealing with your hormones and getting your hormones to communicate to your brain that like, hey, you're full. Yeah. And unfortunately, it does take 20 minutes for those hormones to kick in to, for for your brain to start realizing, hey, you're full. So it's a matter about teaching yourself to slow down so your hormones can start going, hey, you know, you don't need to feed me anymore because then by the time you eat, like you've done a lot of times because now you've overeaten and now you're sick because I've overeaten because by the time your brain realizes you're full, you've like stuffed yourself to the point where it's like coming up your esophagus. I feel like... I am missing that part. I feel like I would, if I was a vehicle, I'd be recalled because that like part of me is missing. It's so weird. Like it's still a constant issue. Whereas, but when you break it apart, you get full, even yeah. though it's the same amount of food. Yeah. So again, it's, I think it's because you're just taking long needs a lot like your chopsticks issue. And if you have that issue, another thing you can do, you know, drink some water. Like drink yeah. some water ahead of time, which will kind of fill up your stomach and then get into your meal. Yeah. There's lots of like tricks. Yeah, it's it's all about tricking your hormones, tricking your brain and everything else. I'm on to myself though. <laughs> I'm like I can't fool myself anymore sometimes. Now the one thing I will admit that I have a problem with is like I am not like a huge planner because I'm more of like a kind of like I'm going to eat when I'm hungry. And like, you know, when it's convenient for me, yeah. whereas your hormones are all about like, this is when you're supposed to eat. Yeah. And so that's what we like, talked about. And I don't really communicate well to Rachel that it's like, hey, today we're going to eat at three o'clock. Right. So at two o'clock or at one o'clock, she's going, oh, when are we eating? I'm like, oh, not yet. So we're going to get a little bit better with that. That's that's definitely like a downfall of mine. And I'm like that way with everything. Like I am like, I, there's certain things I will plan for, but like Anthony will come to me like, what are we cutting tomorrow? I don't know. Depends on the weather. Well, that's not a good answer for Anthony. Right. You know, but for me it is. There's just, I've, I've had to learn because of the type of work I do, you have to be easily adaptable yeah and you know 
it just so I think my mind is just okay with it. It's, you know, there's plenty of times like I want to know what I'm doing, but I just can't make a decision because like I don't know what the weather's going to be like. And or... I'm like, be chaotic in every realm of your life except for my food, okay? Like I need to know what's happening tomorrow so that I can like piece it out the way I want to piece right. it. And for me, like if I'm busy, I'm not eating. I'm not hungry because I'm busy, so I'm not thinking about food. Well, unfortunately, we live on different schedules. Very Even though much. we're together all the time, we do kids ministry together and like, you know, I'm only out like cutting like half a day, but we have very different schedules. Rachel's up at 5 a.m. getting all of her work done. I'm like at like 6 a.m. I'm getting up, but I worked all night Yeah, and I'm kind of relaxing a little bit in the morning. So when I'm super hectic and busy, she's like, calm and relaxed and it's time to eat and vice versa and it's vice versa when she is super busy and like i don't need to eat right now that's when i'm thinking about food because i've got nothing going on so we're gonna try to work it out a little better to like know you know what we're gonna do well i think that one thing that we decided that we were gonna do especially with football season coming on up until this point and, and anytime there's been an off time of the year like when i'm not doing sports which was like up till now since lacrosse season or like from the end of November until February in between football and lacrosse is I've always done all our meals like breakfast, right. lunch, and well, we never really did breakfast. We yeah. did lunch and dinner mm -hmm. and I did them all. And so I think coming into football season, we decided what we're going to do is I'm going to make one meal a day and you're responsible for the rest of your food for the day. So right. I'll be able to tell Rachel like, this is what I'm, this is what we're going to eat as like our dinner. Mm -hmm. or our lunch depending on what my schedule is like if if it's a friday it'll probably be our lunch meal will be our meal together that i'll prepare right and then she'll handle afterwards while i'm gone because i'm not going to get home till 10 30 at night yeah and, and I, I think that'll that'll work good so i can't wait some, that long that'll put some responsibility on you to have to figure out some of your macros and what can i eat to fit me within the day but it still gives me the enjoyment of cooking for you. I like it. So That's good. now speaking of like the breakfast thing, I'm going to say that like so for the last couple weeks, I have gotten off intermittent fasting, and I feel like garbage from that intermittent fasting. Really? Like I've got to go back to it. But I'm going to follow a new plan. Um, a couple of months ago, I guess Thomas Delaller put up a video about intermittent fasting over forty. Are you over 40? Yeah, unfortunately, I'm almost 49. So, but, and he talked about how it should be done differently if you're over 40 than a younger person because of your metabolism. That so I'm going to try doing that where he suggests like only intermittent fasting like three or four days a week. But when you do it, not following like a 16-8 protocol, following more of like a 20 hour fast with a four hour eating, eating window or like a 22-2 but only doing that a couple of days, two to four days a week. Oh, instead of every day. And then also breaking your fast. He said for a 40 year old, you should be doing it a little bit differently. I will leave a link. If I can find a link, I'll leave a link over Rachel's head for the video. Cause it was, it's a longer video. It's like 35 minutes, which is kind of long for Thomas. Yeah. Delaro. Really long for him. But it's Nothing really interesting. Us. He's talking about like how, like you should break your fast with almost only protein if you're over 40 uh -huh. and it's, and he, he, you know, if you know, Thomas Alola, he gets into the science behind it. So I'm going to go, I want to get back into intermittent fasting because what I've been finding is when I say I feel like garbage, I'm getting up in the morning and I've been eating something light, not something heavy, something light, or even I've been doing like a couple days a week, a keto chow, but not with as much butter. I've been doing like two tablespoons of butter and then just a whole lot of water, still filling up like this cup all the way to the top, right? but only two tablespoons of water, of, of rather butter. And, but what I'm finding is, is then I want to eat like a couple hours later and then I want to eat a couple hours later. So it's like, I've, I'm still eating the same amount of calories that I was eating when I was only doing two meals a day, but I don't feel as good. And the scale has gone up, Yeah, which is really weird. Like, and I know that a lot of it's hormones and it's like water and it's like, I, I, I don't think I've gained any, any fat. I mean, I may have gained one or two pounds, but Again, I'm eating the same exact amount of calories that I have been eating for the last like year and a half to two years. Yet I'm up like six pounds in the last ten in, in the last ten days. Wow! Which it doesn't even it's not even physically possible for me to gain that based on the calories I'm eating. Right. But something's up. So I'm gonna go back to intermittent fasting, which I actually started today. Like this was the first Sunday 
And Sunday has always been the one day we didn't eat a myth fast. And this is the first Sunday in over a year that I have not yet eaten. Because we're, we're, by the way, filming this on Sunday instead of Friday because we just got busy on Friday. I feel like I am covered in kid boogers right now. <laughs> Like, I'm a little bit You spent like, the day in, like, zero to one and one to two-year-old room. Yes. I, I've got a lot of boogers on me. <laughs> like, I'm not lying. Like, it's a good thing that there's no, like, smell of vision because... And I um, changed a diaper this morning where the kid was so upset with me, he wanted to keep that poop. Like, he wanted it. And I was like, no, I'm taking it from you. And he was very, very upset with that. But I'm yeah. glad I wasn't in that room. Yeah. It was awesome, though. I, they're so cute. We had a baby today that was like, oh, my gosh, he must be 30 pounds. Yeah. Like, he he's the is cutest little kid. so stinking cute. I can't he's stand He's this little it. chubby little kid. He's so awesome looking. And he walks around like you always think his diaper needs to be changed because he's just got, like, a chubby he's little just butt. He's wobbling. <laughs> I love it. They're so cute. Oh, my god. We're goodness. not having any more babies. I know. But, man... I definitely get my fix. Every single Sunday. I love it. So we talked about my intermittent fasting. What about you? I know you've stopped intermittent fasting for a while too. Yeah, I needed just a break, honestly. Like, I just needed a break. So And uh, that's something that Thomas Solano talks about in that video. He talks about, like, doing it on and off and on and off and on and off. He even talk, referenced a, a cool study, which I thought was really interesting, where they... Uh, it's, it's hard to kind of quote Thomas DeLawler because he's so into science and studies and stuff. But he talked about like where they took this group of people and they both, they all went on a diet over a certain amount of time. But one half of them like would take like a week long break from dieting. And uh -huh. in the end, they had better results than the, than the, the group that dieted straight for, I think it was like 16 weeks or something like that. Oh, wow. But where they took the, the one group would take a week off from dieting. Huh. Because, again, it was messing with the metabolism. And that's all about what the intermittent fasting is. Yeah, so I think moving forward, what I'm going to do is instead of intermittent fasting where I don't eat until 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I think I'm going to start intermittent fasting where I cut off stopping eating earlier right so like i wasn't you know stopping so you want to do morning intermittent or yeah. night intermittent fasting yeah right. but, but it makes sense for my schedule because right. like you said you know for me i've already done like three or four hours worth of work before you know the rest of the house is up and going right so it's just my day is just like different so for me to try to wait until two or three o'clock in the afternoon to eat doesn't make as much sense as me just stopping eating by six o'clock. Right. You know, as opposed to for you, you you may not even be home by six o'clock. Yeah, well, that's something else that I'm going to start incorporating is, especially when I am doing the intermittent fasting, if I haven't eaten by eight o'clock, I'm just not eating. Yeah. That's because that's what happens with me, especially during football season where you know, those games go until, like, on a Friday night game, the game starts at 7, we get out of there at 10. By the time we get home, it's 10.30, 11 o'clock. And I'm coming home and I'm eating at 10.30 or 11 o'clock. And then I'm getting up at 6 or 7 in the morning to get to my Saturday games. And it's like, I feel like garbage going to bed. I feel like garbage when I'm going getting up in the morning to get, now go spend seven hours on a football field. So, like, I'm going to have that attitude. Either I'm going to try to eat all of my meal before I leave from my game. Mm-hmm. And or get as much as I can. And if I have to on Friday, that means it's just like a lower calorie day on Friday. Yeah. You know, because I definitely need to get away from that. Because what I've been finding is that I want to snack like if I'm up all, up all late at night. So like that's a that's a habit. And it's all kind of happened when I stopped the intermittent fasting. Well, and um, I also want to make sure that like I'm eating more of like food Instead of making my first meal of the day like a keto coffee right. or something where I'm getting like three, four, five hundred calories, but from like a beverage, <laughs> I would rather eat a couple of eggs with right. some butter. Now, the one thing is, is that this week we're going to start doing like the resistance bands and stuff. You need to make sure you're going to have to work that one in because you want to make sure you're doing all of your working out, mm -hmm. whether it be going on your bike ride or going on a run 
or doing strength training or anything like that should always be done in a complete fasted state. Yeah. You know, that's where you're going to get the most benefits from it. So that's that. You may not be eating till like 10 or 11 in the morning, but it's like you said, it's not two. It's not two or three. It'll still be, that's still several hours earlier for me. Right. So, um, that kind of works into what I brought up in our Facebook family group, which is what are our five, um, goals for the month of August. Uh So I had asked that and the people in the Facebook family group had had some just really awesome things that they were doing, whether it's, you know, a health plan, they're going to eat differently, exercise, being more thankful, taking some things easy, you know, getting rid of some stress in their lives. All of those things were awesome goals. So what would you say are your Five goals. So obviously one of them is. Well, the you're putting me window. on the spot. I haven't even thought about this. One is an eating window. I I, I definitely want to. I'm gonna like I said. I'm gonna try this month to do more of like intermittent fasting with the way Tom. I want to see how it works. Mm-hmm. I want to see like with intermittent fasting, but only doing it a few days a week. And even on the days that I'm not doing it, it would just. I'm probably gonna do like a twenty hour, twenty hour like fast with a four hour eating window and then other days probably do like at least a 12 hour fast, but I'm going to try to change it up here and there. Uh-huh. So that would be one goal. Um, I want to start incorporating. We've talked about it this month, at least one 36 to 48 hour fast per yes. month. Yes. Because I know when we used to do that, I felt incredible. It's been a long time since we've done that. And it's been a while since we've done an extended fast. Mm -hmm. So like probably, like probably, oh, there's a moth. Oh, now I flew that way. Um, Yeah, so probably at least one 36 hour and then probably, I'm probably going to start incorporating like, you know, a 72 hour fast every two or three months. Just, I, I don't know, I just like the feeling I get on it. Yeah. So... I don't, I don't know what else. I'm exercise with the resistance bands. Yeah, we're going to exercise with the resistance bands. Be more um, decisive as far as meal planning goes for your wife's benefits. Oh, and something else Well, with the channel, and that's probably the last thing I can think of, well, is number five. this week was kind of a fun week. We had a variety of type of videos because we are doing trying to do five videos every single week. And so I liked the way... It worked out this week. So let us know in the comment if you guys like that where Mondays is always keto on the couch and then having one day of like some type of a recipe video, one day of some type of like an informative video. Okay. That's the one that's the hardest to come up with new ideas. Yeah. Um, One day being like... um, like journey with us. Like yeah, go to the go, go to the place. store with us the or field trip one. A vlog or go to the store or a what I eat for the day kind of thing. Like doing that one day a week. And then one day be and a then, pickle review. And then <laughs> and then one or two day one or two uh review videos, depending on what products we have to review. Yeah. But that would be five to six videos a week. Yeah. Not including if there's like a giveaway where we have to film the giveaway kind of thing. I like it. So I want to try to, I want to try to do that. I don't know if we're going to be successful in trying to do that, but we're gonna try. most of the KetoCon like product stuff that we had picked up, most of, we've gone through most of those videos. I think there's like two left that we haven't like kind of gone over the products yet, which mm-hmm. we're going to. Yeah. And after that, most of the product reviews are whatever you guys tell us. They're like, hey, can you review this product? Can you go get this and review it? Or if we find something or... If it comes in a keto crate. So those are your five goals for the month of August. Yep. So mine are changing my eating window, using the resistance bands <laughs> starting tomorrow. But I, I need to like figure out even how to hold them or use the them. The videos teach you how to do it. Okay. Um, definitely incorporating some more fasting into my own diet, even though that pains me. To I think it'll help it. you because you'll get fuller faster because you're going to eat more you know, when you're taking your calories and you're spreading them out over three meals instead of two, it gives you more food when you have over two meals. I want to be more responsible for my own, like, menu, especially when you're gone to football. And then the last one is to incorporate a couple of new challenges. And one of the ones we're going to start next week, which is beef, beef and, and butter. butter. Yeah, but we're going to do it a little different. We're not going to do it like a lot of the ones you see online. We're just going to be like... Basically, you're going to eat beef and butter, like, but it could be any kind of beef. Oh, okay. Like, we're not going to be like, it can only be ground beef. It's just like beef and butter is what we're going to eat. I feel like if it's a cow, it's 
counts. That's that's how we feel. So we're gonna do a beef and butter fast for five days and see how we feel. Again, this is not like it's, I, there's not a magic in beef and butter. I just want to no. see like how do you feel on it? Like yeah. I I can tell you like I'm gonna miss my vegetables, but you think so? I always miss my vegetables. You know, we don't do a lot a lot of vegetables, but I do miss having some extra vegetables in there. I'm excited because it's something that we really haven't done. Right. I like new stuff. Gets me excited for the week as for opposed me, to... For me, like, I'm just thinking about the fact that we have bored. eight dozen eggs in the refrigerator. We'll get to them. They ain't going nowhere. <laughs> They'll be fine. You guys hang out in the fridge. Well, I've got one for you. So, you know, you can tack this one on to that Thomas DeLonga video I was talking about. One of the other things he said you should be doing, if you're over 40... Like, caffeine is really good for you, especially, like, when you're in a fasted state. But you should be drinking all of your coffee in the morning and not towards the afternoon. And it has nothing to do with alertness. It has to do with the way it interacts with your hormones and your HCG and everything else. So you should consume your coffee in the morning and then be weaning yourself off by the time you, you actually do your eating. And that would be, like, you can have your coffee in the morning, but that extra pot that you're drinking at, like, 8 o'clock at night, can't drink that. Ugh. Oh. <laughs> I'll try it. I'm willing to try it. So we'll see how it goes. Do you want to do comments? Please. Yeah, we have a lot of comments, so let's just get into the comments. Do you have a subscriber of the week? Yep, we're going to do the same thing as last week, um, just because I love uh, reading all of the stories. Me too. So we have a few I pulled. Some of them are just kind of quick, like, photo updates kind of yeah. thing. So. Which the, I love. The first one is from Sarah Richwine. Hi, Sarah. And she just wrote a real quick thing. She wrote, I went to turn in my passport application today and it involved a photo, of course. And so she just put up two photos of herself. One is her her driver's license, I guess, before keto. Uh-huh. And then take a look at her, like, post office one. Oh, my gracious. Is that, like, awesome? I just like seeing wow. that kind of stuff. It's kind of like your driver's license photo. Like, you're not even recognizable from your the driver's license The thing is, she is definitely aging backwards. Yeah. She looks, right? like, a lot younger and better. Oh, my gracious. She looks beautiful. Yep. Sarah, congratulations. You look amazing. So the next one is from Sherry Long. Hi, Sherry. Okay, so I will put the photos up here. And so she wrote, actually, this morning, this is a lengthy post. That's okay. Uh, when I started really applying keto to my life, I weighed 177 pounds. At my highest weight, I was uh, 220. I lost weight when I was 39 doing Weight Watchers, and I actually worked for them for 10 years. Oh, wow. I left them uh, and worked a few odd jobs until I was 52. I decided to go to work at a local jail that my husband worked at. I put on around 10 pounds uh, since I had left Weight Watchers. After working in the jail for eight months, they sent me to the academy. And at the academy, in the 10th week of training, they sprayed everyone with pepper spray. Oh, I've heard that they do that. About a minute after being sprayed, I was brought to my knees and with one of the worst headaches I ever experienced. Oh, after goodness. agonizing for two hours, they finally called Rescue Squad, where they determined I suffered a migraine. Over the weekend, uh, I suffered multiple episodes of excruciating head pain. I went back to the hospital and was told the same thing. After that, I lost most of my vision in my right eye, and after a week, I finally went back to the ER where they did a CAT scan, and I was told that I had suffered a hemorrhagic stroke. Oh, my aneurysm. gracious. My inflammation skyrocketed to 83, and a normal is less than 3. Oh, Sherry. I was put on massive amounts of prednisone and needles to gain... To say gain, and needless to say, I gained a lot of weight. Yeah. I was able to lose about 20 pounds on my own, but then I was stuck. Entering keto in this wonderful community that has taught me the, the proper way to feed my body. When I started this in March, my goal was to get back to 150 pay, pounds. Today I weighed 149.7. Congratulations. And I've decided that I will try to lose another 10 pounds. Thank you for all of your support, family. If this 55-year-old can do this, you can as well. I hope sharing this will encourage someone else. These pants were once too tight for me. And the only picture she has is a, pants, a pair of pants that are obviously huge on her that now. That is awesome. Sherry, congratulations. That is amazing. Yeah, that was a great story. So the next one is from Bambi Hamilton. Hi, Bambi. She's a longtime subscriber. Love her. Uh, she wrote, uh, hopefully this will work. Photo on the left was taken a week or so prior to my type 2 diabetes diagnosis. November of 2017, 278 pounds. I was wearing a size 3X top and a 28 jeans. The photo on the right was taken today, 158 pounds. Wow. I was wearing a size medium top and 16 jeans. And that's getting a little too big on me. I'm definitely not much of a selfie taker. That is awesome. And there is her before picture, and there's her after picture. Wow. Incredible. 
incredible, Miss Bambi. Awesome. You look beautiful. So the next one. I like that top too, by yeah, the way. Yeah, I like that top. Very So cute. the next one is from Mira or Myra. Myra? She said, look at what low carb can do. And I say low carb because for the first part of my journey, I didn't do keto, just low carb. But now I have maintained with keto for over a year. I'm two years into my journey. Wow. Miss Myra, you look absolutely gorgeous. I love that shirt because it looks like she's wearing her daughter's shirt now. Yeah. I think it is. It looks Adorable. like it, right? Yes. Okay. So the last one. Congratulations. Is from Hungry Heath. Hey, Hungry Heath. It says with is, is with Heath Parker and Shelly Parker. And so it says it's a Transformation Tuesday kind of thing. He said this low-carb keto thing is obviously working. My starting weight was 460 pounds. And my current weight as of a few minutes ago is 376 pounds. Wow, that's incredible. In addition to weight loss, I'm down two pant sizes and I no longer am a diabetic. Roughly wow. six weeks into the diet, we bought a scale. The day it arrived, I began tracking. And he actually has a list of, it looks like every week. That's and so awesome. just, just to give you an idea, so I'm going to read them anyway, even though it's longer. I'm sorry. That's okay. But it's like Thursday... Um, uh, April 11th, 408 pounds. April 19th, 402 pounds. April 25th, 398 pounds. Three-week tri road trip with lots of cheating. May 18th, he was 415 pounds. He went back up after three weeks of cheating. Uh -huh. Then May 25th, 399. Uh, yeah. Stop expanding. <laughs> <laughs> um, June 1st, 392. June 8th, 394. June 13th, 390. June 16th, 392. June 23rd, 393. June 29th, 396. Uh, July 6th, 391. July 13th, 385. July awesome. 19th, 381. July 23rd, 378. July 27th, 375. And now he's 376. Wow. And wait, here is the best part. Wait till you see these pictures. Because I add them up for them, but you didn't see them. Look, Look at his at before this picture. Look at this beautiful couple. You ready? Oh, he said, and his wife, Shelly, is down 55 pounds. Wow, Shelly. Take a look at this. Whoa! You guys look incredible. Oh my goodness, I, I just love, love it. it. And so I know we're we're gonna do this. If you guys put stories in, we're wow. gonna try to put them up because we like reading them. It's inspirational that for us. That is awesome. And hopefully, it's inspirational for you guys. You know, my favorite part of that was is that in the middle of it, he's got like, "Hey, I went on a road trip. We cheated heavily for." And three he didn't weeks. give up. He didn't give up. Yep. Like that is the key. Yeah, and he got back on the band and going back to it. He got back on the bandwagon, and so yeah, he was up. You know, he went actually exceeding his original weight, but, but then within a, week. within a week he was back down below. I'm so proud of you. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Okay, so into the comments. Cheryl wrote, I love when you guys share the success Thank stories you, of folks who follow you. It, it's what keeps me going. It's what keeps me going too, honestly. Like, you guys are amazing. Uh, doll I wrote. Hey, doll. The financial aid thing is horrendous. It actually caused me to delay college for a year because my mother couldn't figure it out. Okay, so I don't know if I mentioned that we went back to financial aid. Did I say this? Yeah, we did. Where And they tried to give us a scholarship. They tried to give us uh, loans, loan? even though we didn't need them. So definitely, like, I know that there's lots of times when you want to give your child their independence. I'm not I'm planning on attending college courses with my child, though I would like to, but we're not going to do that. However... Yeah, I'm glad that I re-looked over his financial aid and just didn't send him out the door. Like, I'm sure it'll be fine. You figure it out. Because I'm not entirely sure that he would have known to physically reject a loan. Yeah. And then I was actually really proud of him because I took him this week to transfer over. We always had a custodial bank account with mm -hmm. him where it was me and him. And we transferred over to a regular checking account. Right. And I didn't even have to say anything because he knows that, like, I've had my identity assumed and you've had, like, your credit card numbers stolen and stuff like that. And he went through and he was like, I want every single alert. He's, like, telling the bank attendant, like, I want I want to be alerted if I make a deposit. I want to be alerted if somebody tries to use my card. Like, he put, like, every – and he did it on his own. He just, like, knew, like, I need every single alert there is. I'm proud And of I him. told him, though, don't rely on those alerts because a lot of times they don't come through. Like, get into that habit of – what online banking here is the awesome thing is that you can every day go check that bank account. Ubriel, sorry Ubriel. if we're butchering that name. That's a pretty name, Ubriel. Uh, we're oh, we, these are off of the net carb versus 
Total, Total Carb video. Mm -hmm. So there were some good points on here, so I wanted to read them. Overall wrote, I am glad to hear that you mentioned the cephalic phase insulin response, particularly for those of us who deal with type 2 diabetes. Knowing that our carb tolerance is affected by more than just what we actually swallow is key. Yeah. And that is definitely like a, something that a lot of people don't understand. The fact that just with certain people, just like, and that's why like everybody is different. So for some people, even though stevia or monk fruit is zero in the glycemic index, it can elevate your insulin. Even if it's just a little bit, it's not something to be super concerned about, but it's something to just keep in mind. Yeah. Okay. Um, MJ wrote. Hey, MJ Hawk. I shoot for 50 grams or less of total carbs and eat almost exclusively whole foods. As long as I'm not baking keto treats, all is well. That's a great idea. Yep. Now, that is one thing that I did forget to mention in that total carb versus uh, net carb video. And because I remember I was on a forum once and somebody said to me, like, you know, some, some they were advocating for net carbs. Okay. And I said, the problem, bottom line is it's very easy to turn 100 or 200 total carbs into less than 20 net carbs. And you're like, it's impossible. I'm like, I can give you a perfect example. Probably our Cinnamon favorite, cake. <laughs> our, our favorite treat. No, better than that. Our favorite treat, right? Processed foods, favorite treat. Smart cakes. Yeah. 39 calories, mm -hmm. right? Or 38 calories. And it's zero net carbs. I don't remember how many the total carbs is. I want to say it's like nine, if I remember right. I don't remember off the top of my head. Okay. But let's say, I think it's nine. Okay, well, at 38 calories, I could eat 10 of those. Easily. And it's only 380 calories. But I've just eaten 90 total carbs. Definitely don't want to do that. But zero net carbs. Now let's go even more. Over the course of the day, I just go nuts and I eat 20 of them. Now I've eaten 180 total carbs, but zero net carbs, and I've still only eaten, what, 760 calories? Yeah, and yeah, that's, you know that's, that it is impacting you. It is absolutely impacts you. I don't, anybody who says it doesn't, it does. If you eat that much sugar, alcohol, that much like carbs, one way or another, it is impacting you. And you're so gonna poop your pants. what I forgot, what I meant to yes. mention, and I forgot, <laughs> I forgot to mention, was that if you are doing a net call protocol, a net carb protocol, a really smart idea would be like 20 net carbs, but no more than 50 total carbs. That That's will keep idea. you like on track. And you'll see a lot of people will recommend the same thing. Like Dr. Barry will say the same thing. If you're doing net carb, um, you know, I've seen uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Berg talk about it. Same okay. thing. Like, don't exceed 50 total carbs, even if you're following a net carb thing. Because otherwise, you're just going to get yourself in trouble. It, it is easy to eat 100 net total carbs and have it at 20 net carbs. Especially if you're doing, like, baking. Baking, you know, lots of fiber, eating a lot of bars, you know, a lot of erythritol. When you have products that have, like, 27 grams of erythritol in one cookie. It's got to add up. Uh, Rhonda M. Rowe. Hey, Rhonda. I agree. You have to do with what works for you and what you can maintain. I started with net carbs and moved to total when my weight loss stalled. I still sometimes do net on treat days. Thank you for another great video. Yeah, everybody's different. Yep. And I think that, man, we're just here to encourage one another, not to discourage or try to like police one another. Right. I just, I don't understand that full thought process. That's right. Uh, currently picking the perfect name. Which I love. <laughs> of all the videos that, that cover this subject, this is the most informative and simplified. Good wow. job. And thank you. Thank you. And she also wrote, um, regarding the IMO, how did we determine that we can subtract half of the carbs and why half? Uh, there are a lot of studies that show that IMO fiber that your body does partially digest it. So that's where they've come up with half. If I can find them, I'll link them down in the description. But there's a couple of studies where they talk about IMO fiber, soluble corn fiber, tapioca starch, and what their effect is. And IMO fiber was found to at least be partially digested. So most of the studies do suggest all the same thing of only uh, taking out half of that fiber. Yeah. Nanotech wrote, hey, what Nanatech. are the good sugar alcohol names? My husband is a type 2 diabetic and we have been doing 20 total carbs since April. He is now off all insulin and no longer taking metformin. That is, that is awesome. awesome. Okay, so the best sugar alcohols that you're going to on on keto, sugar alcohols, you're going to be looking at, um, the best ones are going to be erythritol. 
and then you have monk fruit, which is not a sugar alcohol, but it's it is a natural sweetener. Um, xylitol is a, an okay sugar alcohol to have on keto, but understand it does have a small glycemic index. I want to say it's 13, but I don't remember the exact number. I'll leave it on the screen. Here. Also watch it around your pets. Yeah, because xylitol is deadly to dogs, especially. But xylitol is okay on uh, keto. Uh, then when you talk about erythritol, there's a lot of different brands of erythritol. Make sure you're buying um, organic a non-GMO because it does come from corn. So you want to make sure that when you buy your erythritol, it is a non-GMO. Otherwise, you could be getting GMO corn and that's like another whole situation. Yeah. Uh, the other sweeteners, sucralose is okay. It's zero on the glycemic index. It shouldn't impact your blood sugar except for if you have the cephalic insulin response from it. What about allulose? Um, allulose is another sugar alcohol. That's a newer sugar alcohol. Um, just because it's newer, I don't usually work with it because it's so new. Um, but it is zero on the glycemic index, zero on, uh, it shouldn't impact your blood, blood sugar. Now, Keto connected a great video on it. So like the, if you want to know about every sugar alcohol and artificial sweetener and what's good on keto, I'll leave a link for that uh, over Rachel's head for that one. And because that's a really good video to it watch. Is. And they did something that I'm not willing to do, which is literally test themselves over several weeks and see what their impact is. Yeah. You know, but the best ones right off the top is stick to erythritol if you can, monk fruit, stevia, allulose is fine. And then sucralose is fine. But like sucralose is like it is an artificial sweetener, but it is fine on keto. So long as you're getting pure sucralose. Yeah. Okay. Even aspartame technically is okay on keto. It's just a chemical, so it's got a bunch of other issues with it. And you've worked so hard to work it out of your life. You're right. trying to keep it out. Yep. So Alan wrote. Hey, Alan. I like your idea of seeing keto as a lifetime choice. I've lost 50 pounds and have been maintaining by using wow. a net carb approach. Well, congratulations, first of all. Yeah, congratulations on that. And yes, our that's our whole thing is that keto is not like a short-term like diet it is really should be a lifetime lifestyle yeah because basically once you've worked the sugars out i mean we consider like the sugars and the processed food poison right basically so i'm not interested in working the poison back into my life once exactly. i like lost a taste for it like yeah but later on poison again <laughs> no i think definitely it's a lifestyle choice yeah i think you'll be glad you made that choice so heather lomax wrote hey heather Thanks for this great info. I'm on a journey to reverse type 2 diabetes and inflammation. Seeking healing in this is what led me to keto. I want to encourage diabetics to feel they aren't achieving or seeing the results they want. I'm not either at this point, but we must change our mindset and realize that we must give our bodies time to heal to reverse yeah. insulin resistance. I know this is the lifestyle that will bring my healing, but it may take me longer than someone who doesn't have my issues. Yeah. I lost my mom to complications to diabetes and then was diagnosed myself a month or two after losing her. I'm beating this. So diabetics, please don't give up. We will do this and succeed. Stick with it. I love that she says, like, I'm beating this. Yep. I love that. Um, my mom has beat type 2 diabetes after having it for 20 years by joining this keto lifestyle. So I know it's possible. Not that a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend heard somebody's neighbor once, you know, got rid of diabetes. This is my mom. She no longer has it. So yeah. I've seen it happen. I know that this can happen for you. Absolutely. So Bookworm Sarah wrote. Hey, Sarah. My first computer was a Commodore 64 that my dad brought home from work. I'm pretty sure the only thing I could do on it was play Oregon Trail or Pong. I remember the Commodore 64. You had Oregon Trail? Lucky. Like, we didn't have Oregon Trail. We had it at school in my computer lab. We didn't have computers when I was in school. Wow. How old are you? I'm old. Well, Oregon Trail was awesome. <laughs> Super awesome. Lisa Whitney wrote, Hey, Lisa. Don't laugh, but I still have a VCR and I use it to show my granddaughter Disney videos that her mom watched when she was little. I'm not laughing a bit. Because you have a VCR, like, they still work. Sandra McFetters wrote, Hey, Sandra. Well, I'm in the house enjoying you folks' YouTube on my fancy iPhone. My hubby actually still owns and uses his old 8-track tape player out in the shop with only a few tapes and still work. So he ends up listening to the same three albums over and over and over. LOL. Yay for YouTube and modern convenience. Sandra, I have to ask, like, what are the three albums? 
I got to know. Like Maybe one of them is Def Leppard. I had an 8-track player in my first car, and I had to listen to Def Leppard on it. I got to know what they are. You got to let me know down below. Like, what are the three albums he's listening to? Because basically, he's doing that whole, like, I live on, what if you lived on a desert island and you could only bring three things? Like, he's got his three albums. Yeah, let us know down in the comment section. If you were on a desert island, what are the three things you would bring with you? Okay, so all of these comments are like suggestions for video ideas. Okay. Okay, so Matthew Becker wrote, and this one is actually from the pickle juice one. (laughs) I think you should start a What Can We Get Rachel to Drink series. You mean like alcohol? No, like pickle juice because of your ridiculous facial expressions from that one. Give me coffee. And then coffee and maybe some coffee. <laughs> uh, Lindsay Broner wrote. Hey, Lindsay. Uh, I'd like to see Dave eating videos. Wow. Well, we need to like step up our game and make them interesting. Yeah. Because if you just want right to see me eat eggs, like you might be bored. So Joe Ray Gamble wrote. Hey, Joe Ray. I know you like to keep things positive, but how about a video about products and ingredients we should avoid and why? You guys have found some really great products lately, and I've bought several of them, but I think it would be helpful for many of us to know what you avoid and what you are looking for when you go shopping. That would be a great video. It would. I could tell you one right off the top of my head. What? That I am super suspicious of whenever I see it, and that is tortillas. Tortillas? Yeah. I think that there's a lot of, like, companies that are trying to, like, get people to be able to, like, eat keto food, but, like, hold it in their hand. You know what products I actually want to review? I want to go find them is the built bars that everybody's eating right now. And people have asked about them. I have not tried one. And when you look at the ingredients, the ingredients look pretty good. Even though it does have maltodextrin in it, it's like very low on the list. But when you look at what it looks like, you know, I've seen people put up videos. It it looks like seriously like a Milky Way bar. Mm -hmm. Something's not right. Like... I don't know. Something I'm just like, I definitely want to go review one and do a blood sugar test because, I don't know, something just seems suspicious with it. Yeah. I think anything that says, like, carb smart or something on it, I'm, like, super suspicious of right from the get-go because I'm thinking, like, hmm, yep. you're trying to market it to me, but, like, are you being responsible? That's right. Mimi Tilton wrote, Hey, Mimi. I'd like to hear about what your serving sizes are. I've been on keto since uh, April 8th and have gained weight and fat. I love keto, but I can't get my portions right. Yeah. Okay. It's it's difficult for me too, for 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 real. Debbie H wrote. Hey Debbie. Calories count or not? How many calories should you have in a day if you should count? By the way, why is Joe going to Hollister and Rachel is going to the thrift store? Um, Rachel likes going to this thrift store. I actually I like going it. sometimes, but our local thrift store that she likes to go to with the really good cheap prices. They don't have a huge selection in men's, especially in my size. But the women's is, like, ginormous. They must be robbing a truck on its way to a store. And I'm just looking the other way because, yeah, they have so much girl stuff. And a lot of it still has the tags on it. But the guy stuff, they have, like, they literally, I went with Rachel the other day. And they had, like, four pairs of jeans in my size. And I'm pretty particular in my jeans since I lost weight. I, like, I only want to wear super skinny jeans or skinny jeans. And they were like all big baggy things, but they don't have much. And then they have just like one rack of t-shirts and they're all like old ratty shoes. They don't have a whole lot of clothes that I would wear. Yeah. But when I do go to Hollister, and by the way, Rachel goes to Hollister too. I do. And to Express. But I only shop the clearance rack. Like we were talking to somebody at church about it and they were like, oh, where'd you get that? And I'm like, oh, this shirt was awesome. In fact, this was another one of them. Like this shirt was $47.00. It was on clearance for $17, then 30% off of that, and then I had a 20% off coupon on top of that. And that's how I shop. I, I I won't pay more than like $20 to $25 for a pair of jeans, and usually we can get them even less. Well, I don't mean to brag, but today I'm actually wearing like uh, a Mario t-shirt from the boys section at Walmart. <laughs> Because we're trying to fit the theme of like right. the uh, video game series that we're doing at church. So, yeah. We used to go to a Kids. great thrift store down in Miami. It was like red, white, and blue thrift store. And like everything in the store was brand new. I mean, I would go in there and get lucky awesome. jeans. And they were like brand new. Still had the tags on them. And we were getting it for like 8 or $9. But we don't go down there that often anymore. Yeah. But it, it got shot. harder in my size. Because I, I'm like wearing a size 29. So... It's a little bit more difficult, and I just don't want to have to 
go through an entire rack of like 40s to find the 129. I get super frustrated, even with clearance. Like I walked, Anthony and I walked away from a clearance box last week. It was like 80% off all the shirts in here, but it was like a box with like 500 shirts and everything mixed in. You have to so dig through it. You have to dig through that box of everything mixed in. And then when, of course, you pick up, oh, I really like, oh, that's the wrong size, you know? It's kind of like going to Ross. I love Ross. It's another a great store. Because but. they have so many, like, good dresses. It's hard to find dresses. I need to find a dress for the Coasties. I'm probably going to go to, like, David's Bridal over in Sawgrass Mills. got great deals here last Yeah, I week. got, like, a really nice long dress that was $18. That was super cheap because it's basically an old bridesmaid's dress that some bridesmaid was like, that's it. I'm sick of being, like, always a bridesmaid and never a bride. And she, like, rage quit a wedding or something. Right. And so then I was able to, like, get her dress that she didn't pick up for $18. Bucks. But um, but Ross it has a lot of stuff, but you have to dig through it. And yeah. sometimes I just get tired. Yeah, you just get frustrated after a while but sometimes i do go to thrift stores and just the our local thrift store has a lot more stuff for women than men yeah i like a lot of clothes so nancy a wrote hey nancy i'm curious if you've had your blood work panel done my hdl and triglycerides are good but my ldl is high and my doctor panicked and wants me to go vegan or statins what sad time for a new doctor i'm still struggling with the truth about ldls so Dr. Barry has a lot of really good videos on cholesterol. Yeah. And a lot of them even do, you know, like, really address the whole LDL issue. It's not something to be super concerned with if you're doing keto and, you know, you're eating super low carb. Because really is what it is is it's the carbs that cause the plaque buildup in your arteries with the high cholesterol. But the, the thing is, is your body's going to make 3,000 milligrams of cholesterol every single day. Yeah. You know, but... We're not doctors, I'm going to tell you, if you can go, there's a lot of good information out there mm -hmm. that you can start researching with like LDL and what it means. It, 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 all LDL is a, is, is a carrier. Right. What you really want to worry about with your LDL and your cholesterol is what is your remnant cholesterol. So go back to your old blood panels, take your total cholesterol, subtract your HDL and your LDL, and you're going to come up with a number. Then now check your new panels. Even if your LDL went up, most likely your remnant cholesterol has gone way down and that's a good thing. So that's what you want to look at. We just had somebody like in our Facebook group, you know, show the same thing where like her LDL went up, her cholesterol went up, but her like remnant cholesterol went from, if it was like, like something like a 56 to a 16, like huge difference. And her Huge. triglycerides like really dropped. And that's what you really want to be concerned about is those triglycerides. So check that out. And again, go take a look at Dr. Barry's channel because he's got tons of videos about that stuff. Yeah. Sherry Long wrote, Hey Sherry. I love all the stories of how keto has made a positive impact on others' lives. I've done many diets with success, but none were sustainable for the long term. If you need some encouragement, hop on the Facebook family group from Two Crazy Ketos. Aww. It is an awesome no judgment zone. Congratulations on the conference in Salt Lake City. Aw, Sherry, you're awesome. Yeah, if you're not a member of our Facebook family group, there's a link down in the description. Go ahead and join it. And there are just some awesome people Best in there. Best people on you. earth. Yep. So last one. It's from Vivijay. Hey, Vivijay. I think he was like the last one last week as well. He posted some pictures in our Facebook family group. He looks incredible. Yeah, I'll put that picture up here. It looks Amazing. awesome. So he wrote, I'm right where Joe is with the scale teetering so close to the next digit, except for I'm between 170 and 171, and I can't hit the 160s. Aww. I think I'm shorter than Joe at five foot nine and a half. Yeah, I'm I'm actually just pretty much almost six foot. I'm like five foot eleven and three quarters. He wants every little bit of it. Absolutely. That. Everyone is telling me I don't need to lose anymore, but it's not like I'd be at all disappointed if I maintain this since my original goal was between 185 and 195 which is where I was when meeting my wife up to the point of our honeymoon. Aww. But to see the 160s, which is basically my old high school weight, would be completely mind-blowing as 45-year-old who had become extremely obese. Yeah, that's awesome. I saw my parents over the weekend, and my mom asked what I plan to do now, and I basically said that I'm doing keto, and if I have a cheat treat meal, it would be from my own decision alone and not from peer pressure or if I'm somewhere no one else is eating that way. That's good. As Scar would say, be prepared. We went out to a bar and they got sweet potato fries and asked if I could eat those. And I pretty much told them that I may as well eat, just eat regular potato french fries. I didn't. But it's uh, said that it's basically the same nutrition. Yeah. Last week at work, my company was bringing lunches in all week and I didn't partake of any of it. They wow. had pizza, Chinese food, sandwiches, Chick-fil-A. 
For me to have something off keto would have to be something I'm heavily desire and something top quality from a fine restaurant, not pizza or fast food, etc. It's amazing. Like once you set a bar for yourself, it's like, yeah, it, it becomes easier to say no to stuff when you're like, okay, well, it needs to be on par with this in order for me to like go ahead and eat it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the distance how I becomes feel. this far for, for me. me to go off plan. It would have to be something so ridiculously scrumptious that like I absolutely cannot live without, which I cannot even think of. One I can't thing even right think now. of one thing that I miss. But it's funny. He talks about like, well, can you eat these or do you want these? And like Chris was talking about on like his keto child, one of the live streams. And it's like, it's so makes so much sense right how you know you do keto and i I sometimes think that people want to see you fail because you've had so much success and you're like almost jealous of it it's sad and they offer you like oh you can have just one of these come on just go off just this one have this little piece of candy have this little piece of cake have this one french fry right and it's like chris it was like such a good point it's like i'm stealing it i want to say this to people all the time now it's like you know I've had a problem with food. You know I've had a problem with carbohydrates. I've lost all of this weight on these carbohydrates. And that's a poison to me. And I truly believe that like eating like the candy and the the, the like carbohydrate breads and like all of these like just simple carbohydrates and stuff is a poison. Yeah. And you're offering me a poison knowing that I had an issue with it. But if I was like a heroin addict. Or a former alcoholic. Or a former alcoholic. Would you still offer me like some heroin or an alcoholic drink? No right. way. You wouldn't offer that You'd to be me like, because you know that it would relapse me. But you're completely fine with offering me stuff that could relapse me on my diet. I honestly don't think that most people are like jealous of your success on the diet. You know, like the amount of weight you've lost. I think it's more a case of that they envy like your commitment to anything. You know what I mean? Like when you've just well, resolved. That a little bit of jealousy? Yeah, oh yeah, but I'm just thinking like I don't think that they're upset that like you've lost weight. Oh no, no, no. But I think it's like that resolve. I think that people really do envy just like commitment. Right. And it's hard to make commitment, especially in this day and age more so than I think ever before. You know, to be like, hey, I'm I said I'm gonna do this. I am a man of my word. I'm a woman of my word. This is an integrity thing. I'm just sticking with it. I remember when I even when I first started and I had just I had just lost all the weight and but I was still only like seven or eight months into the journey and how many people come and be don't worry, you're gonna put it all back on. I, and I thought, why are you wishing that on right. me? Like, that's kind of not very nice, but yeah. Yeah, so great job, Vivijay. I mean, great job resisting all those temptations because I know yeah. sometimes it is hard to resist them. But I It think, gets easier and easier as you go along. But. but I like what he said. If I do do something, if I do eat something, it's not going to be because of peer pressure. It's going to be because I choose it. Right. That's a huge, like, thing. That's a huge decision to make. That's right. Well, that is the last comment for this week's Keto Yay, on the Couch. So thanks, guys. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below, and we will read them on next week's Keto on the Couch. I don't know how long this video is going to be. I'm just looking at that timer, and it's like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Sorry. So if you guys like what you saw today, do us a favor. Hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. Bye.